it's time to do, 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 do the Viper games because we got another one up against a clear Smurf, top 20 in the world, Kaido the Beast. Oh, so it's got Beast in the name. Beast? EQT? Maybe. Let's find out. Hop in the game. Viper versus Beastie. This one is live as well, by the way, folks. So I don't know how it's going to end, but I'm already intrigued by the map and Civ choices here. Delhi versus Mongol on High View. What? When was the last time you saw this? I feel like I never see Delhi picked on this map anymore. It feels like everyone's always just like spamming it on the more popular map. Maybe it's, mm. maybe it's just I've been watching too many... You know, too many pro games, so you gotta save your deli for like, you know, Hill and Dale or Danny or someone else. But this is intriguing. So Kaido the Beast, for reference, is clearly a Smurf, by the way. Kaido the Beast is currently sitting in 18th place on the leaderboards. 1964 ELO rating. 73.7% win rate with 217 games. And I I I'm looking at most players, Sivs. England's in there. That maybe tickles me to think it's like Beastie. I'm, I don't know. I'm just like, it's, maybe it's the bait of the word Beast being in there. And it's the fact that I know like Beastie is this type of player that could easily have this many accounts in the, the top 10, top 20. Because remember, Beastie at the time recording, Papega is still sitting in second place on the leaderboards. His primary account is sitting in sixth place. Could this be another one from him? If anyone knows the name of this account, by the way, let me know. Because I want to know who this is. Because this account is clearly very active and here to stay. But someone we don't have to wonder about is Viper. Viper back on the grind, of course, had a brutal time at M4C being eliminated. And, and looking, to be honest, like the weakest player there. I don't think anyone can argue that. Even if you're a, a Viper fanboy, you have to be honest about this one. He was not prepared for what he walked into there. I think one of the big things that was focused on was like Viper felt like he didn't have clear build orders or like the other players highlight this as well is that Viper is very much a good player at like reacting the moment. I think that's one of the things that has allowed Viper to just be quite, kind of like one of the uncontested goats of Age of Empires and RTSs in general is his ability to adapt on the fly. That ability only gets you so far though. If you don't have like an acute deep understanding of build orders and your opponents do, then you're going to get tripped up. That's why when you think about StarCraft, you want to start playing StarCraft now, people tell you to like practice and perfect that first 10 minutes because it really will be the difference maker that opens up the rest of the game for you. And that's someone that Viper is obviously looking to improve upon. And he already is getting wise to the new Mongol ways. Here on High View, he will open up with double pasture. No aggression and understandable against the Delhi. Delhi, not really a sieve that tends to drop a rack straight away and rush over to your side of the, the map with outposts being spammed out. Instead, Mongols... Very much a sieve that can exploit this matchup to go for that much more powerful castle age timing. Because I think that really is where the edge exists for the Mongols now. I don't think this is a, a feudal rush sieve anymore. This is very much a castle boomer type sieve. The value and step readout that you get is astronomical. In conjunction with the better stone generation rate, once you access castle and above compared to where it was when it was a fixed number, it all just adds up. It's very beneficial. And also, getting these patches down right now pads your economy layer. If it's safe to do it in this game, and a lot of these matchups it is as well, by the way, because unless you're against something like England, you're not necessarily paranoid about early aggression, then getting your flimsy, dangerous, like, food transition point out of the way and making sure you have infinite scaling on your food front very early on is incredibly beneficial to the Mongols because they don't have the same options other people do. They can't just drop a farm right next to their TC. It has to be pastures, and pastures take time to start generating. So if you can get these out of the way quicker, then you're going to have surplus sheep. If you drain all your sheep and then drop pastures, your food eco is dead for quite a long time because even with the assistance of the UV, you can see these take 1 minute and 20 seconds to produce. Now, one important thing to look at when we check out High View that can be exploitable one way or the other is kind of like the location of gold veins. But I have to say, there's something about this generation that seems to have been quite generous for both. This gold vein is defendable for Kaido. And on the other side, of course, because of where Viper moved his TC, he's got his wood line, he's got his gold. Everything is fairly condensed. He could have maybe like, you know, shifted a little bit closer to the gold line to fully pad it, but I prefer this. It's just less time wasted for micro details to make sure you'll continue to push out villages faster. And of course, because you do move your TC, it does mean that he's a little bit behind, only slightly behind the eco count of Kaido. The more important detail for Kaido, of course, is going to be playing towards those sacred sites in the coming minutes. Something that the Delhi have been trying to adjust with ever since the nerf to the Sanctity uh, gold passive generation rate it is like, what is my timing? What am I playing hard into? Am I a feudal sieve now? Am I a hard castle age sieve? Because it used to be before they nerfed Sanctity, remember dropping it from that extra 100% more gold to 50%, 
it used to be a hard feudal. You'd be pushing out horsemen, spearmen, building up palisades around these sacred sites, locking them in and forcing your opponent to come out all the while, garnering additional resources because the moment you capped it, you get 66 gold. And from there on, it was just profitable because these scholars only cost 75. Now things have kind of changed. Sanctity is still a key component, but I've noticed a lot more Delhi players looking for a slightly later timing or looking for more of an all-in, where if they're going to invest heavily into Feudal, it's not about me kind of cheesing my way up to Castle because you have to invest Feudal and I'm just getting passive gold. Instead, it's like I'm hard into Feudal because I'm hard on the idea of ending you right now in this game. I love this out of Viper. So well identified. Like, he doesn't know what his opponent is doing. He could run the Khan in. It could be a little bit of a gamble, but he hasn't got his tech up yet because remember, he slowed himself down with the double pasture. So instead, he's going to prep a full back point of outpost. That's also going to give the Yam movement speed, which means even if he runs into a line of horsemen, it's not just a maneuver arrow and you're either out or dead. Instead, he'll have a quick full back point, a nice padding, and also Viper maybe looking for a more aggressive timing here. When you go for these early outpost placements, it's just kind of like the importance of making sure you know what's coming, but also setting yourself up for a kind of a quick ripple effect. One of the big issues I've noticed out of a lot of Mongol players at the moment when they, they do play Mongols in the recent patch is they'll take a fight, they'll win in their own base, and they no longer have the benefit of Yam being as powerful as it was. Because remember, the timing got nerfed. It doesn't last that full duration it used to. It's only 10 seconds now. So it's a lot harder to exploit that to reach your opponent's base from your own. I love the horseman spam out of Kaido. We said, what was he going to do? Well... He's going to spam out the horses. We know this is a popular strategy. And remember, military efficiency already being researched means he will be able to push them out doubly fast compared to other sips. The Mongols can somewhat match this with a double production due to the Uvu. But as it stands right now, it's only a Rax for Viper. Viper will finally go for the stable. But I think he was trying to be ultra aggressive, uh, ultra greedy here, right? But as soon as he sees the ultra aggression out of Kaido, he understands what type of deli game this is going to be. He's going to be dragging this out in the feudal and he has to react to this. Khan in the meantime. He's going to fight with a few archers. A beneficial trade, but he needs to be careful. This can backfire very quickly. And oh my god, he used the attack speed arrow. Big mistake made. Oh, that is painful. Viper felt confident about just pewing them down a little bit quicker. And as a result, now without the Khan for two minutes at a critical point as well, because Kaido is ramping up the aggression with the double archer production with the horsemen soon to be just boosted up as well. In fact, I think the moment, the only reason Kaido hasn't banked a Scholar in this stable is because his economy would be too stretched thin. So right now, he's just trying to optimize that, get double the archers as he can afford it, and in the meantime, get a nice balanced force of horsemen out with them. And in with those horsemen onto the Uvu. And this, this is frustrating for Viper. Viper trying to build the outpost as a knee-jerk reaction, maybe a little bit too late. Has to pull back for the moment. Horsemen riding out on the home field. This can be the advantage of Viper, but the Spearmen are gonna struggle up against these archers. The important detail, though, is he will be able to get that outpost up. He will be able to deny his opponent. And this is the danger. So when you have to knee-jerk react with defenses, sometimes you can be exploited. But this time, Viper will not. And this, as a result, Kaido will back off for the moment. And the outpost network extends. I like what Viper's doing here. Just giving himself that free flow control. This is brilliant. He gets it in position to deny the sacred site control. And then also, more importantly, he can react quicker, right? If his opponent pulls hard to the right or hard to the left, this network with the Yam speed in place will allow him to quickly shift across the map to respond to Kaido's force. Oh, Viper losing a lot of spearmen there. There's a lot of pressure in the center. And I believe herbal medicine, yep, now being researched. And this is where Delhi get a little bit broken. Viper might get himself a little bit frustrated about it. Nice snipe out in the skull in the meantime, though. And that's the wraparound. That's the power, right? That Yam movement speed, 2.16 tiles per second on the horseman. I mean, they really are naked and riding, right? Like, any extra weight needs to be gone. We have no melee armor because we don't wear proper armor, mate. We just ride around with the dongs dangling about. They probably also shave their head for optimum, uh, like, aerodynamics, right? Got to make sure nothing is impeding the speed force. If you'll allow him to quickly decap that sacred site. In the meantime, central sacred site also now going to be contested. Kaido. Kind of awkwardly postured here now. With slow moving archers, paranoid about the counter horsemen, not really having that vision game to his advantage right now. It's going to start to get a little bit uncomfortable. Viper establishing more outposts here. This is going to get very, very annoying very fast. 
Archers. Oh, no. Harden can't. Not good enough. Viper again. I mean, he's just playing handicapped at this stage. Multiple times losing the Khan in such an awkward fashion. But look at this. That's a freebie. Oh, Kaido didn't realize either. No textile still being assassinated here. Viper, you slivery bugger. That might be all the villagers dead. And Kaido not realizing it. Now Viper starting to get an eco lead. And it's all the pings going off. Because remember, he's assaulting one of this outpost over here. He will successfully burn that one down. But his food eco expansion has been denied. And Kaido, he is floating a lot of food for the moment, but this is going to cripple his timing a little. Because look, he's running out of berries here. When he transitions across, he might not notice this until it's too late. And that will be frustrating because Kaido in this state, right, controlling through sacred sites, look what he's trying to do. He was trying to pat himself for a castle age. Viper instead is going to beam to the punchline, and this is an important detail. Getting access to that castle age, getting access to the step readout with the increased gold push in. It's going to be a big booster for Viper and it will give him the edge in the next five to ten minutes. So then we have to talk about like what the condition is, like what Kaido is looking to do instead. I think Kaido needs to actually find a breach point, but the longer he waits, the more outposts go down, the harder it is. While he could wiggle west and go round, it means that instead, Viper could just straight away breach into his eco lines. He's already done that. He's in. Oh my god. Kaido doesn't realize. And he says, you might be a beast, but I am here to slay the beast. Brutalizing the villager lines of Kaido. He'll try to get another one in. I think he just about got it in before it was killed off. And all of a sudden, that eco lead starting to be realized. Now Viper, eight villagers ahead of Kaido. Kaido might be top 20 in the world. Might be looking pretty spooky on those leaderboards. But right now, looking a little bit played. Horseman. Are going to be chased away. Viper in a delicate phase right now. This is very gambly what he's doing here. The outpost being burnt down, but he is starting to tech up. Horseman line being renewed in the meantime, but he's not ready for this. If the aggression ramps up to 10, if Kaido postures just outside the base, he could actually shut Viper right out. And the only thing stopping right now is this. Siege engineering has not been researched. Kaido... He didn't go for the full tech boom. He didn't get the secondary blacksmith. So he will not be able to just march in and end this game. And that's a saving grace of Viper. Much needed one as well. Viper in the meantime, making sure that berry bush is still not accessible. In the meantime, Kaido Kai will make the choice to go south. This time, establishing an outpost. He's not going to leave himself exposed like he did the first time. But now he needs maximum value. Rax packs up to move away. Means it has no missile resistance. It can take a lot of damage here. But Kaido instead sees the opportunity to snipe the Khan again. But this time, not good enough. Veteran Khan will survive. Backs away. And the Rax can't pack up or pack down just yet. Sheep was in the way. And he will pack up all the pastures and move them away. Uvu being burnt down. Lance is starting to be pushed out. Kaido, he knows he needs to find value. But Viper doesn't care. Look what he's doing. With the yam speed, he's using it to his advantage to gap close into Kaido's economy again. Kaido. Uh-oh. I think he realizes it and he, he's reacting. This is not good. This all comes back to the fact he doesn't have siege engineering. He has no way of actually denying Viper of shutting him out of this game. And it means he has to fall back. And with the Lancers coming out, he has no answer really. Only four spearmen here is not going to be good enough. The horsemen, in the meantime, trading in the center. More spearmen coming out, giving the edge over to Kaido. And Kaido will clean up the cavalry battalion. But that doesn't matter for Viper. Viper says it was a distraction. All I needed was time. He rides in with a splinter force. Half the horsemen went south. They'll be straight into the main eco lines. They're straight into the villagers. But instead, Viper, I think he knows something's up. He sees nobody on gold. He sees how compact the eco is. And understands that there must be somewhere else. But where is it going to be? Viper now wrapping towards the south, but he's looking in all the wrong places. Because Viper, he never scouted this out, so he doesn't know for sure. The Lancers are going to pinch around from the side. And although there's room to garrison here, just a few Lancers could burn down this outpost. This tech up from Kaido, although it will not be denied, it is compound of the defenders. So instead of giving himself that long-term scaling, he's looking for an answer soon. An answer that Viper is reluctant to give. I'm a little bit worried about the eco state as well. It's not like you've been getting good out, uh, like good control around the sacred sites, right? The outpost control from Viper is good. And now with Springwood upgrades, look how hard it is to cap these sacred sites. And he doesn't want to react to them because he's still dealing with static force, right? A lot of this is spearmen and archers now. So if he moves across to them, he's out of position. And this cavalry composition from Viper will exploit that as it is right now. 
He'll move in. Snipe out one or two villagers. The rest were able to garrison. But the Lancer count is starting to amass for Viper, and it looks like there needs to be an answer soon out Kaido. Kaido shifting across with a heavy battalion of archers. Not really a solid solution right now to this outpost. Meanwhile, Lancer's horsemen will ride around again. There's still a pesky villager who's been out here the whole damn time building even more outposts. And that's going to give the extension of the Yam network more movement speed to rush in under these eco lines. And I can't help but feel like Kaido's just, he's stuck putting out fires right now. He's not really making any dominant moves towards his opponent anymore. And this is, this is dangerous to find yourself in this position up against the Mongols when they have the clear eco lead. An eco lead that Viper hasn't decided if he wants to reinvest or be greedy with yet. But it looks like it's going to be a reinvestment. He's upping the racks district. He's looking to push out more mana arms. And if he has spotted out the combat and defender, which I think he got eyeballs on when he dived the base before, then he knows that he isn't worrying about this superior lance or superior man and arms due to the power of home blades, because instead, that tech is not available to the Delhi here. And Archer's wasting so much time on this. Right in the meantime, Khan will force the garrison once more. And although the villagers are protected, they are not gathering. It is definitely hurting Kaido's ability to build a resource surplus. And with more Lancers arriving soon, I think this expansion might fall in the next minute. And he knows he can get away with it as well because Kaido, he's wasted so much time pulling over to the right side here. Man at Arms are starting to mass in the center, but look at the healthy count here. Five Lancers, five Horsemen, two Man at Arms. That is good enough to burn down a 1,000 HP outpost. Not good enough to protect Kaido. The Pasha district is so healthy now. Viper shouldn't have any food woes or worries anytime soon. Kaido soon to run out of this wood line. He might find himself somewhat vulnerable at this rate against the superior movement speed of the cavalry that is wrapped around on the villagers. The outpost can't even protect. He boxes him in. He catches Kaido not looking. He catches him wanting. But Viper wants more. And he will get more here. Snipes out the outpost. Denies this eco pocket from Kaido and Kaido struggling now 14 villages behind Viper and remember Viper already had a, a better lead right he has 13 people working on gold that's more like 20 so he's clearly very far ahead of his Delhi opponent right now this fight coming out the man arms will be rinsed in the end Lance is able to move away that will be the move arrow to quickly get them out of dodge and all the while, Viper just cackling to himself. It's all too trivial. New Uvu established. He's going to get more of that stone just built up, and that'll allow him to double produce the Lancers once more. But in the meantime, look at the count in his base. It's a hard transition right now. He doesn't need the Lancers anymore. He needs a, a strong force. He can't just go for the death by 1,000 cuts. He wants a Falcon Punch to breach Kaido's chest. It's a one-punch man type maneuver. All these man at arms, the Maganels as well. He's looking to move in and, you know, migrate, become the Delhi himself. Just make a, a kind of base in the base, right? And I don't know if Kaido can do anything to stop this because instead of building into Springles, he's building Maganels, and it takes a long time to build these. Meanwhile, if this ever gets spotted by Viper, courtesy of the ability to build out in the field, he can knee-jerk react to this instantly on the front line, building Springles and countering out your own siege. Viper, this military count doubled up by Kaido's, but so much of it vulnerable to Maganel fire. Those Maganels are moving out right now. And Kaido does not know that will be a free shot onto them. Outposts being renewed, just starving any ability for Kaido to move under the guise of the Stealth Forest. And the Mago shot's coming in. He needs to back away, and I love this out of Viper. He's trying to cut him off. Rides in. Man at arms trying to stick on top of the spears. Spears unable to turn around on the Lancers. And the maneuver arrow comes out. Viper sticking to him like glue. Sticking to him like the plague. Forces the turn around there. Mago out of position, not able to do anything as the scout reveals that. The scout won't be able to burn it, though. A back away in the meantime. Mago shots coming out. It just got revealed. The information gathered for just one or two units dying for Viper is good. Viper needs to sort his food right now. His food is struggling. He's not building surplus as it stands. However, he's better off than Kaido. Kaido, who's being forced to just pivot harder into farmlands, he's going back for those berry bushes now. But a lot of idle time for him. Mago is being exposed. Shots coming out. 
onto the Maganel. Wraparound as well. Viper caught out of position here. The wraparound is good. The burn down. Maganel's falling. One down. And the Mago count is superior for Kaido, who clean up the central fight. And Viper now in trouble. As he will have to retreat. Good control gained in the center here for Kaido. Mago is being built up by Viper, but Viper, a critical error there. Not able to spread out. Not able to prevent any sort of advantage of a wraparound coming up from Kaido. Not respecting the fact that the Delhi player still has a clear military lead. 20 to the 57. And he will push that lead. Outpost will not be able to go up. A pullback by Viper. Needs to respect the fact that this time, it's not like the last time Kaido was in his base. Last time Kaido, he was a Taurus, checking out the sights. This time he's an invader with Maganels to make sure he never has to leave again. And this is why Viper goes to the raids again. And look what he's found. So many villagers here. Kaido's getting desperate. He can't afford to switch over to farmland right now. He needs all the wood for the siege. So instead, he has to go for this greedy eco pocket, one that is still being exploited by the Lancers of Viper. And so many villagers here, no room for all of them in the outpost. That's going to be a heavy hit. Viper now at 65 eco. Meanwhile, Kaido, almost 20 behind him. And the Maganel spring was being built up. One Maganel going to be exposed. One more shot maybe coming out. Just about gets its death cry out as it dies. And the man at arms are going to chase in. Force March not really being used here by Kaido. I don't think he even researched it. But he's able to gap close, burn him down again. The shift back on the military district, moving further back in the, the, the backside of Viper's base where it's not exposed. And it looks like the count is too low. Kaido lost way too many troops here. Not enough damage. And now the man at arms riding out with the Yan movement speed, able to gap close. One of the Magnels going down. Second one to fall. Look at the shot into the villagers, but doesn't find it. Viper, quick to react with the garrison just in case. Cleans up the siege, cleans up the vanguard, and Kaido forced to retreat. And this retreat won't be successful. The Lance is coming out. He's going to clean up all of it as they go back towards their base. And all the while, look at Viper's positioning now. It really is turning into a game of death by a thousand cuts. And Kaido, he's just constantly being, being poked in the side. Mocked by Viper's Lancers, unable to ever react. And once again, forced to garrison here. He tried to build the third outpost. He knows he needs these berries so bad. And that's why Viper continues to invest in this area. This time, though, the Springles will be a little bit more pesky. We'll punish the Lancers, but punishment given both ways, my friends. It's now a 27 eco lead for Viper as he hits the holy eco number. And it really does feel like that eco number was saying something else to Kaido. Something I cannot say on a broadcast. Get something. Because right now, Kaido is feeling a little bit screwed. His only hope is if he can start to transition and find raids. You see him establish central control of the keep, but what he really needs now is some sort of dynamic force. He still doesn't actually have any hard stable push. No Lancers coming out, for example. If he could raid in, if he could find the soft underbelly of Viper's eco, which, although condensed for the moment, is starting to get a little bit more greedy with his positioning, then he can punish them. Because look at this at the back. Viper has a lot of risky eco back here. But Kaido, one of the biggest sins that I have to highlight of him this whole game is his scouting has been lacking. He's been boxed in. He's been denied. Viper's been getting these cheeky outposts down. And Kaido's kind of been playing blind. A big mistake on Highview. One that a player like Viper will be quick to exploit. And relics are at least going the way of Kaido now. But you see the pretend now coming out. So Viper trying to somewhat deny that. He needs to be quick. He needs to actually block control around these. And he's playing mana arms into that area. So he should be able to stop Kaido from returning this relic. And that would be important. I mean, when you invest in the prayer tent, you at least want two of the three. Magnell shot's coming out. Finally getting rid of that pesky network. And oh, Viper. He sees it's gone. It's too late. Yam didn't last long enough. He will not be able to find this scholar. Remember, the Delhi get this ridiculous tech. Turning their boys from boomers into zoomers as they go from one movement speed to 1.5. This juiced up lad, even carrying a relic at that speed is absurd. Not a small advantage of the Delhi, of course. Spit in the face of Roost players as well after their monks got nerfed, moving slower from 1.62 to about 1.1. Meanwhile, these lads, 1.5 at all times, even when carrying relics. Viper. Now trying to breach that center. Keep trying to be pulled down. A few villagers here that can repair, but Maganels are a bit pesky. Springwood upgrades going in place. Maganels moving forward. A trebuchet being built. Springwood as well. This is what he wants. He wants to bait him in. Kaido needs to be careful. Kaido does not see this yet as well. The Magos trying to bait him into fire again. 
And remember, folks, Viper does have a Ford Villager here. He can repair the damage done. The damage is slow. Yes, it's springled in placement, but it does get the bonus damage of an actual springled. The springled now moving forward, looking for the shots. Not able to find them, though. One of the Magnels is going to go down. The springled shot out will make it a trade as Kaido loses one of his own. Needs to be repairs. I think there's too much prioritization. And there it is. Viper finally realizing he needs to actually tap these with a the hammer. Keep him alive. Treb up as well. Damage on this, ensuring the keep is going to go down soon and forcing Kaido's hand to respond. And a pull back. Right in. There's the force march. Gap closed quickly from Kaido. He's on top of him. The Springles being targeted out. The Mago is still standing free in favor of Kaido. Now the fire coming in. The heavy damage. Viper gets caught. His Maganel's trying to return the fire, return the damage. Trebs in the meantime still continue fire on the keep with the Scholars trying to heal up the units on the front. A few mana arms sneaking through into the Mago line will do the damage. Focus fire coming from the side Maganel to try and get rid of that Vanguard, but they might do the damage. And the Springwood upgrades in the outpost as well, doing business of Viper, forcing Kaido away. Too many troops lost, too much hemorrhage to here. It means he might be forced to fold and run. And the movement for is good. Man at arm sticking on top of the Maganel. A nice attempt by Kaido with the initial gap close. It was good to get on the Springles, but he was not able to gap close on the Maganels. And the Maganels are now the difference maker. They will back up for the moment. And Viper, just looking at that strong point, more outposts going down, trying to ensure his opponent has no way of taking this ground. And my god, he denied him as well. Kaido, we saw this attempt to wall up a long time ago, but Viper denying him this freedom to access this backside. And that that is going to lead to Kaido's backside getting spanked at this rate because it's him in a delicate phase right now. If anything, he wanted this space to get a secondary TC to tap these gold veins, to tap this whole area drain dry. But instead, Viper now with a few knights around the back is going to not allow him that luxury. And you see Viper, he's just got small contingents everywhere trying to make sure he cannot find access anywhere. I gotta say that the way Viper is playing these games, like it looks a lot more impressive. I think he's sorted, he's actually sorted a lot of things out compared to like his performance at M4C already. It's starting to show, like he's definitely learned. And this is definitely one of them. It's post M4C Viper. He's coming back on these purple leaderboards with a with a vengeance. Kaido. About to lose the keep. He can no longer protect it. Can't even get the ball in oil research. It takes too long. That is gonna be going down. And this is the thing about Springles. Those Springles upgrades, they're better against infantry. They're better against actual, like, units compared to Siege, right? Because the Springles, they get 120 damage on their shots against Siege. Whereas the Springles, I think it's guaranteed 60, if I recall correctly. But it doesn't get bonus damage against Siege. So better against, like, you know, infantry, cavalry, whatever. And look at Kaido, how desperate he is now. Building up the stone walls on the center. It's getting a little bit hard. And that... Might be what she said, but it's also what I say. I say Viper is making this game a struggle for Kaido. Flowing a lot of surplus wood as well. Like, Viper is very padded on protecting his, his siege line, right? And replacing it. And also, with all this wood, he's got so much. Like, honestly, it's, it's that guy. I've got too much, right? It's falling out of his hands right now. So you just invest it in a constant slew of outposts on the front. And the trebs as well. That's, that's condemning for Kaido. Kaido riding out once more. Trying to gap close with the force march, but I think it's ran out here. And the Trebs will retreat. Maganels as well in range of the outpost. And this is going to pull them apart. The Scholar Heels trying to come through. But the Mago Fire might be the bigger problem. They do get on the back line, though. They're in. Kaido able to blitz them. Trebs exposed as well. But instead, he's going to take the fight with the units that matter here. Because the Trebs are not doing damage to his infantry. The Scholar Heels are ridiculous right now for Kaido. And it's buying him time to burn down the outposts. The Magos will back up. As a small contingent for Viper did try to wrap round. Viper not able to take the central fight right now. Needs more troops on the front. Man at arms holding their own, keeping Viper's reinforcements back, buying time to burn down these outposts as the Maganels move in. Viper will regroup now. The Magos are still the problem. You see, Kaido just wants this wiggle room. Give him an inch and he'll take a mile here as he's trying to get another keep down on the central sacred site. But no access to that sacred site victory condition as one of them is parked solely and truly in Viper's territory. Now with the villagers, with these outposts being gone, one or two might die, but they'll be able to get this down. And still, I believe, yeah, this Kaido, did he go for a secondary TC? He must have. There's no way he's kept... How is he caught up like this? One TC, folks. This is just one TC. It's quite impressive the way he's caught up. Like, the distance is not that big between them. 68 to 59. And Viper seemingly sacrificing a few too many eco units, building these forward outposts. Means he's hurting a bit. And more Trebs going down. 
this heavy investment needs to be protected, but Kaido, Kaido really just never having the surplus resource to build a second Siege Workshop and get the Springles out. Instead, fully in on the Maganels. And it's understandable why. The logic is that he should be able to take a fight, push forward, and then force March right onto the back line of Siege. It's a strong strategy here, but the Trebs are really tripping this up. And it means that these keep investments, these wall investments, are not proving as solid as Kaido would like. But he's trying to fix that now. And I love this play. Remember, folks, Springles cannot shoot through stone walls. It's protecting his Maganel line. The movement in. The shot's coming out. Heavy damage on the Springles as well. And they have to go round. And this is bad. Five part. Look, he has no choice with them. The Maganels now get so much value. Kaido with a heads up play. Maneuver arrow coming out. Gap closing quickly. The damage heavy onto the front line for Viper, but on the Maganels nonetheless. This chasing is not good enough, however, and Viper is going to lose the main battalion. What a play out of Kaido, utilizing the power of combat of the defender to deny the counter attack with the Springles is such a heads up, brilliant, high level play out of Kaido. And Viper, while I might be hungry for pizza, he's hungry for a comeback because he's going to need it right now because Kaido, he's hungry for blood. And I, I have a, a rumor, I've heard a rumor that Kaido the Beast does enjoy dining upon the body of Vipers. Nom, 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 nom. That's what he's looking like he's going to do here. The Trebs did get through the keep. That's the saving grace right now for Viper. Getting rid of that keep was critical. Had that keep remained standing with these walls as well, you know Kaido would have kept going. But because he loses the keep, he shows him respect. He backs up. And all of a sudden, Kaido forced to react with outposts. Because the stone is depleting quick, my lord. He can't easily just keep dropping them willy-nilly. And you can see, like, stone is limited on his side of the map, right? He's moving on the big stone chunk here. He's got two smaller ones after that, and that's it. So, really has to be sure that where he's investing these keeps, it pays off. The good news, of course, is because you drop the combat and defender, these keeps don't cost as much, remember. They get that discount of 25%. That's why these walls are also pretty cost-effective, and I love that Kaido's doing this. Viper has gotten way too much value through the continuance of this game out of raiding to the north and the south. This will finally come to an end. He completed the enclosure on the south. The north side is soon to be done as well. And although the keep isn't fully enclosed, it at least has a clear choke point through which Viper will have to fight. In the meantime, Outpost going up. This Viper, he just loves to use this, this Khan as a raider, not as a front force to win the big fight, but instead just to be a nuisance to his opponent. Or 300 health, it can get away with a lot of this. It's very hard to assassinate this Khan. Like, you have to send over several troops to just assassinate them. Because, you know, 300 health is no joke, especially with free missile resistance as well. Army continued to mass for Kaido, though. He's looking to assault further in. He's like, I will not be distracted by these trivial raids, Viper. I'm coming for the throat, for the jugular. And it has to be said, that both players are struggling to reach pop cap in this game. The aggression in the mid game is actually preventing a 200 pop cap. With 32 minutes in, nobody's anywhere near, really. Like, you know, you, you've got 142. It's kind of, I think that might be the highest point we've seen so far. And this does work to Viper's advantage. I don't think Viper wants this to drag out to Imperial for his opponent. If he can get Imperial for himself at good timing, it's a very strong advantage because it might force Kaido to knee-jerk react and go Imperial himself. And I think that's actually bad because remember, folks, one of the big issues with Delhi going Imperial is that by the time that your people learn how to be better, right, but by the time the tech-ups come through, it honestly feels like real-time aging up has passed, right? Like you've actually gone from real-time castle aged Imperial. It feels like it's been hundreds of years because it's not uncommon to see the research underway and you can see it there. This research taking like 15 minutes to get elite man arms. That's such a crippling factor, especially if you invest 3,600 resources to do so, which is why Viper, understanding this, will go for the white stupor himself after he pads his military force up to 64, where he, within the first few minutes, will be able to get the clear edge, and Kaido will now be forced to be in reactionary phase, where if Kaido doesn't all in and find impact into Viper's base, he is going to be in poor position to take this game. Hey, hey, hey. Trebs, still problematic right now. I believe, yeah, did he use the Uvu? Because he's got two types of Trebs here. I think he did actually use the Uvu for double production. Not a bad play, actually. Now he has the White Stupa to give him all the double production. And look at the stone, folks. Tech up complete. And look at Viper. He gives ground. He shows respect here. He knows he doesn't want to take a fight because the moment the tech up gets seen by Kaido, Kaido, his 
Team Red, right? He's gone bloodthirsty. He wants a fight. He needs a fight. And Viper will not give it to him. Step read out, shifting towards the back. He got raided here. Got denied, but he mo mostly tapped this gold vein dry. So not the end of the world. The problem is these gold veins are now on the front line. So Viper, he has finite resources at this stage of the game. This is one of the limitations with Mongols when you go hyper late game. You don't have infinite gold generation. Step readout is powerful, yes, but it relies upon a finite resource. And in onto the Siege Workshop, didn't even pack it up to move it away. Viper giving over a lot of ground, now building into Springles. He needs to assassinate his Maganels. Now up to eight for Kaido. But you need to be careful. Remember, the big age Kaido has here. He wants to bait the Springles forward. If they ever come forward, he'll use the Force March to gap close with his man at arms, moving at over two movement speed. And here they come. Walls being built. This is another move. He doesn't even have to go to them, right? He can just do what he's done so far and block out their vision, block out their targets. Because the Maganels, they have an arc shot. The Springles do not. And this, oh, this is, looks so disgusting now. This is getting ridiculous. Kaido continues. And this is why walls are kind of broken. You don't even need to build the full wall to get the protection. So trivial. Mago shots coming out. More outposts falling. A frustrating state of affairs for Viper. And a keep being established now by Kaido towards Viper's base. Looking for access. Stable starting to fall. So many passions. Viper? Okay. That was a misclick. That was a big whoopsie daisy as well. And that hurts as well. At this stage, like, look at his surplus. He doesn't have that much. That's a painful situation to find yourself in. Mago's needed in vast quantity. Vaster quantity for Viper. He's running out of wood. He needs a new line. He needs gold. I think Viper might be out of this game. He doesn't have the gold to build an anti-siege army or Maganels of his own. And he's wrapping around now with the Springles with the Yam movement speed, trying to get around the side. Lance is moving in the meantime on top of the Maganels. Burn a few, a few of them. A lot of damage being done. Kaido down to four Maganels in the blink of an eye. But this is padding him. Look what he's switching into. It's now the Tower War Elephants. Kaido doesn't want to be limited by Maganels anymore. And those Maganels don't feel limited at all. The damage being done. Viper not able to spread his line thin enough, taking a lot of damage here. And Kaido able to hold. Splinter into two groups. Moving around the side with the Yam getting around the back here. Trying to burn down the Maganels quick enough as they try to slowly just move to the front line. But Kaido, critical mass, looking like it might not wait, achieve for long, but being held back. Viper not targeting them out. He only gets rid of one. Two still standing, trying to back away. Spring was targeting them out now with the shutter trigger range. Will force them away. Only one Maganel left though, and Kaido. Kaido holding for the moment, switching over to the Tower of Elephants. This is his new siege. He needs in quick. He needs to find a way to access towards these landmarks, but there's four of them he needs to assassinate, and he hasn't even dealt with one yet. One of the Trebs, though. Trades out the man at arms, burning them down. Traction trebuchet is falling. And Viper, he's running out of resources fast here. Being drained quick. And keep will fall before the Trebs go down. The death cry of the Treb as it does its due duty. But now the Tower Royal Elephant, something that needs to be addressed. Viper seemingly having no counter to this. Remember, his composition was not prepped for this transition. And Kaido taking a transition from a position of strength could give him the edge here. The question is, has he reached critical mass? I feel like he needs a few more Royal Elephants than this to feel good about it. New keep going down, remember, only cost him 600 stone per. Has plenty of in reserve to afford this. The Magos from Viper now trying to punish, using irony upon Kaido, as he's stuck in these choke points trying to hold back the man at arms from flooding through. He'll lose his front line. Tower Royal Elephants on the side with Lance is trying to clean up the east side of this fight. Khan is back out in the mixer for Viper. Viper pushing more mana arms forward, trying to find those small commando units to go through and maybe extract value elsewhere, but he doesn't have the surplus resource to afford that. And he doesn't have the time either because Kaido is coming. Kaido, Kaido now up to what, three Tower Elephants, fourth probably coming out soon. New Maganels being pushed forward. No full base for Kaido, so the reinforcement rate is a little bit slow. But as it stands, Viper is struggling to reinforce himself. And the Khan is down once more. And I, I can't help but feel Viper's limited. Look how little military he has. Look how little military production he has. It's only racks. And this means that Kaido's composition right now beats him out. He's switching over to Spearman, but this is a little bit of a knee jerk and a little bit of reaction too late for my liking. I feel like Kaido is well positioned here. And I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get Spearman out in a large enough quantity. Now, keep in mind, Spearmen are quite good for the Mongols in this matchup because of the Yam, because of the Moon Arrows. My issue is the mana arms count right now. Kaido, he is gaining ground, but he needs to gain a lot more soon because 
for all this, the thing that has remained true is while he has got Viper by the short and curlies, Viper is Imperial and Kaido is not. And Kaido doesn't have the luxury of going for it. It's why he's investing so heavily. Should he go for that Imperial Age, remember what we said. It's a long ass way. You're looking at probably 10 minutes for the tech ups. In fact, if we look at it right now, Kaido, if he teched up right now, that Elite Man Arms upgrade and Spears, 15 minutes. Too long. Far too long. And also, what's the point, right? If you're playing hard into the compound of the defender, going for that tech up doesn't benefit your siege composition. You're not going to go bombards because you're using stone walls. Maganels and Trebs are your play. Everything you can utilize good right now is in Castle in this composition. So Kaido just needs to go, and he needs to go soon. And nice job here with the extension. I love this move right here. Denying gold away. This is the way you win the race right now. Look what Viper was shifting for. This is painful. Viper needs that gold. Look at his number right now. 22. Just past the age of drinking, but oh, Viper's going to need a few drinks to get him through this one because this has got to be getting stressful. <laughs> well, I mean, this is definitely value for the step readout. I think we forget this, but remember it's a girl, so it does function as a drop-off for wood, but not really the play that Viper was looking for here. Denied on the gold. He needs the breach soon. Maganel's working on the wall. He needs an in. This really is the let me in meme, if anything. Still just a what, what? Oh, man. The prayer tent going down as well. No passive income. Marketplace trade has got to be getting painful as well for Viper. I mean, look at it, guys. He sells 100 wood or 100 food, and he gets less than 60 gold for it. This is painful. And Kaido, I think he might have done it. I, I just don't see how Viper replenishes quick enough. He has one last fight in him, I feel. If he loses that fight, this is over. Man arms in, quick wall this up, and he'll force the TC away. Maganel's trying to get in range. They don't target the villagers though. <gasps> Viper dodging death. It will shift away. The great migration, not just for the sheep, but for the Mongols themselves. So many moving back. Four foot in the high ground here. And four foot in the high ground and high view doesn't tend to end well for players. And this is just vile. It's just disgusting to watch. Kaido the beast, more like Kaido the rat. Or maybe it should just be a Dark Souls beast, the vile beast in this situation, because this is just toxic. Disgusting. Viper, no way of defending himself. The Great Migration will continue towards the northern corner. He's getting starved out. Kaido just keeps renegotiating the terms, and the terms just keep getting worse for Viper. He gets less ground every fight. And more keeps going up for Kaido. Everything going down for Viper. The Springles chased in upon by the force much of the man at arms. Cancelled a little bit early for Kaido though. But the Maganels are in. Tower Elephants as well. Your military district exposed. Your villagers exposed. Everything exposed. Viper. This is the squishy underbelly of the beast. And the beast on the other side is going to look to just eat in. He's like, oh, the, the liver. The lungs, they're all so tasty. Mm, just give it all to me. The Viper, he's got nothing left to give. He's stuck on horsemen now. Horsemen that have not been upgraded to elite status because he can't afford it. And they will try to ride around into Kaido's siege line. Maybe they get their value there, but this Maganel line is just doing so much damage. The TC on fire soon to fall. Maganel shrugging will turn and fire now onto the veteran horseman. They will get their value. But what do you do now? Because the tower elephants are in. Yeah, the Maganels are dying, but who damn well cares? The siege weapons here. The Ramophants, the Elephrams. They're going to force the Great Migration. All the stables shifting away. Not that Viper can afford anything but horsemen. He can't afford anything, in fact. Remember, this is where his food production was. Everything is grinded to a halt. Look at the numbers and do not scream. Because the boogeyman is nearby, folks. Viper is getting 25 food and gold per minute. That's when he occasionally raises a building to the ground. The only thing he has an amassment of is wood. But I'm sorry, sir. We don't take wood as a currency here. You might be a male hooker, but we're not buying. And Viper, 
I mean, he hasn't called GG yet, but why not? I, I just don't see a way back in. He's at net negative on the food right now. Look at all the sheep. Just GG out, Viper. Think of the sheep. Oh, I don't know if he's thinking of sheep right now. He's trying to think about where all this went wrong because Kaido has cheesed him out of this. Well, poor little Viper here might be extracting food from these sheep, really. Kaido's just been getting all the cheese in this game, and he'll get the win here on a high view. No way back. Kaido the Beast proving exactly why he's a top 20 player as he looks to push Viper out of that ranking. Oh, my goodness. What a fight. Both sides, but so well played by Kaido. Showing exactly why, despite the nerfs to compound of defenders, despite how Lul building stone walls feels right now it's still so valuable the springwald advantage the tech up viper should have had it all within his grasp but really the greedy boy got too fat and he started eating himself he didn't realize it it was the gummy bear from um oh what's it called from robot chicken right he just like eats his own leg i was like my goodness i'm delicious jump straight into another bear trap that second bear trap being the tech up because he had no gold anymore kaido brilliantly identifies this he gold starves his opponent so effectively and then relies heavily on maganels never giving a damn about the siege of viper instead just crawling in gaining more ground and that's something where viper can't contest not only can he sprinkles with the additional range not far through stone walls he can't build stone walls of his own. That's where the Mongols struggle. When they go on the defensive, they rely on the outposts. And you saw it. Actually, Viper had a, a, a win condition here. It was all about critical massive outposts in the center, holding, and then allowing you to fold your opponent. But Kaido doesn't allow that. It was so brilliantly done by him to drop another keep in the center and deny access to that area from Viper. Had Viper gotten that area, had he kept those keeps away, he would have had a flood point to move into his opponent's land. But Kaido not only denies that area, he walls up the sides, he forces Viper into a choke point, and once you're forced in that choke point, relies heavily on the power of Compound of Defender to ironically be the attacker here and shut Viper out.